Hello and welcome to the show. I am here on Forza 6 with another silly car build. This has been a relatively highly requested vehicle, the Volvo 850R. Now, I love the 850R. It's a great car. However, the rules for the silly car builds, I won't fiddle about with the drive line. So, rear-wheel drive cars stay rear-wheel drive. Front-wheel drive cars stay front-wheel drive. The Volvo is front-wheel drive. Uh, this is likely to be quite silly because the A50R can have a rather unexpected engine. I gotta say, uh, if we go, we go to the upgrade shop, to the uh, the engine swaps, the uh, the 2.6 liter inline six, not as a particular surprise. The 5.7 liter V8, well, this goes in most cars, and not a particular surprise. However, we can put in the NASCAR engine, the 5.9 liter V8. So we're gonna get pretty much a thousand horsepower in this Volvo. Through the front wheels. This will be the most powerful front wheel drive car I have ever driven. Pretty much. I had a 900-ish horsepower focus on a Horizon 2. I don't think it had as much power as you're going to be getting out of this. So, this should be a fun one to see uh, how, it, uh, how it goes. We're going to want all of the Forza Aero. Is that the Touring Car bumper? It could well be. Um, I'm not sure on that though. Uh, the Forza Wing is just a tiny little add-on for the spoiler. Sure, we we'll go for that. I, yeah, I, I, I want all of it. How much good it's going to do me, I have no idea. Uh, if this gets into R class as front wheel drive, I'd be very, very surprised. I don't expect to see it out of uh, out of S class. Two four fives on the front and two four fives on the rear. Uh, the 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 main concern like the rest of this stuff is going to be uh, almost secondary i'll be honest sticking this th th this lot on the main concern pretty much the, the entire concern with this car is can i actually use any power in the volvo will it just sit and spin and spin and spin and spin some more that's kind of what i'm expecting uh <laughs> from the car. I will I will be honest, when I drove the 900 horsepower Focus, it wasn't actually, was it Focus or Fiesta? I can't remember. Whichever 900 horsepower Ford it was. It was the Focus. I think it was the SVT one. Anyway, it wasn't quite as terrible as I was expecting it to be. I thought it was going to be nigh on, nigh on undrivable. Uh, the Duke, actually, come to think of it, no, the Duke, the Nissan Duke can have the can have an awful, awful lot of power, and that's front-wheel drive. I can't remember how much. Did I have over a thousand? It might. Uh, either way, the uh, the ridiculously powerful front wheel drive cars uh, have not necessarily been as uncontrollable as you might expect. So there is that going for the uh, for the Volvo. Uh, we will stick on the uh, or remove the restrictors. Two thousand nine hundred pounds, near enough a thousand horsepower, uh, almost eight hundred foot pounds of torque as well. In the Volvo, all going through the front wheels. I suspect we are going to have quite a lot of understeer to be dealing with. So we are here to the Brands Hatch Indy Circuits for our six laps in the pouring rain. Our current leader and target car, the Lancia race vehicle with a 49.8. That is a very quick lap time that I somehow doubt the Volvo is going to be. I mean, the Plymouth Fury with a 53.8 is perhaps the best target for the Volvo, but uh, I'm very concerned about drivability. But let's go and see. <laughs> of course, we're going to get a lot of wheel spin. Let's try and find... Uh, that's actually surprisingly... Uh, it's not quite as terrible as I thought it was going to be, you know. All of this, all of this power. Oh, don't run too wide down there. Cold rear tires in a very powerful front wheel drive car in the wet. Probably not a good combination of things to be dealing with. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really, you know, not that bad. Quite, quite drivable uh, through here. Oh God, now we're going to run a little bit wide. I mean, there is, <laughs> there is huge amounts of understeer if you try and if you're using any throttle during turning. You've got to use just a tiny, tiny amounts, otherwise it will just want to go straight. If you get it wheel spinning through one of these corners, if you've tried to use too much throttle through one of these turns, you will just go straight into a gravel trap or a wall or the grass, whatever's closest to you. Uh, because, yeah, there is there, there can be a huge amount of understeer, but surprisingly, surprisingly controllable. It's got 140 miles an hour out of it in a straight line. That is really... 
That's only 10 miles an hour off the, the Hellcat. Front wheel drive Volvo against a maxed out Hellcat. It's only 10 miles an hour down, and that's with me faffing about trying to put the power down out of that final corner. That's really impressive. That's really very, very impressive from the from the Volvo. Oh, no, please turn, please turn, please turn. Find some grip. Thank you. We are avoiding the apex down there quite well <laughs> at the moment. Not quite intentional, but there we go. Uh, <laughs> the, the trick with this car is if you are careful with it, if you are cautious, it's surprisingly drivable. I mean, you do have to be very, very careful with the throttle here. Certainly, in, in comparison to every other car you'll drive around, I mean, you have to be careful with the Ferrari and with the Maserati and so on, but not quite in the same way that you have to be careful with this thing. This is, uh, yeah, you really, you really can't afford it to be uh, spinning the wheels too much. Admittedly, you don't have the huge wiggles that you get from the rear-wheel drive cars, but uh, it's, you just can't carry the quarter speed and get the speed out of the corner as well. Like out here, you really got to kind of wait to try and use any of the power available in the car. Oh no, rear wheels on the grass. Oh, we're going to play off in the dirt. <laughs> it was going to happen eventually with something. Perhaps not too surprising that it is with about the longest car that I've driven uh, around here. Ah, uh, push my luck. Of course, you want to be on the outside for the turn in there, try and get as good a line through the corner. I was trying to not avoid the apex this time out, but uh, yeah, if you leave it a little too late, so easy. We see if we ever run versus the community here, maybe you just do a race here in the rain, and guarantee at least one or two cars are going to do that at some point during the during the race. It is so incredibly easy just to leave that back wheel a little bit too much and uh, yeah, get the grass and then you've got no control of the car. And in a very long Volvo, I'm trying, maybe going up into high gears is a good idea through here. I'm not entirely sure that uh, <laughs> I think we're just going to get wheels spinning absolutely whatever we do. Good news, we're not going to roll the Volvo, I don't think. Uh, you can occasionally see cars roll off the uh, the first corner here. Uh, I don't think, we've kind of been alright with the, with the silly car builds that have got around. Nothing's been really likely to roll. I thought this Volvo might be the closest, but you saw there. It got up onto two wheels, but nothing. Nothing major. Uh, right, again, we're running a little bit wide. I don't quite take the, uh, after that, uh, that slight spin, I don't quite run it as wide on the way down into there. So, uh, yeah, played it a little bit safe this time around. Actually, I'll be on for a half decent lap on this particular one. We've just got to wait and wait and wait. In the Lancia, we were flat out by now, and the car had grip and traction and so on. And this, we're struggling with about half throttle, and we're still fighting it. But admittedly, we've struggled and fought with a lot of cars uh, around here. 55-0 is not bad. That's, that's pretty respectable for a NASCAR engine front-wheel drive estate car. That's really pretty good from the from the Volvo. I'm not sure I quite want first here. Maybe we should try leaving it in, in some higher gears, getting it out of these... Oh, no. We've, uh, <laughs> I tried something. It didn't really work. Oh, Christ there. Okay, now we're going to be all the way out over here. That's better line through there. Again, you see I just blipped the throttle a little too much trying to get some power down. It was, it was too much. It got wheel spin and then just, nope, you're not going to get any turning. There's nothing you can do about it. If, uh, if you do that by accident, so easy. Such a fine line you tread with uh, with this guy. The controller is going absolutely berserk. He's spent pretty much most of the time rumbling away as you try and get on the power out of any of the corners. It, this this kink onto the straight here, you don't think about. I've never really thought about it in 90% of the vehicles that I've ever driven around here. It's only these silly car builds that that kink has ever been a, a thing that you have to seriously ponder how you're going to take, seriously worry about it because you just can't take it with speed in, in this Volvo. But everything, aside from the Lancia, everybody, all of these city car builds have been having issues getting their power down onto the road. And it's slowed again down here. Oh, back ends wanting to come around and say hello. It's actually been pretty, pretty well planted, the rear of this car. I think I pushed it a little bit too much trying to carry that speed, trying to make some more lap time. Hasn't quite worked through that part. We're a couple of tenths down on this final run. Can I do anything out of this corner? I don't know if I can. Uh, we'll try and get try and get that power down onto the road as best as possible in the Volvo as we run towards the line with the estate car. We are going to do... Oh, uh, we got a tenth, but it's not enough. <laughs> 55-0. Oh, we're probably not going oh, to stop down there. <laughs> 55-0 for the Volvo. Now, that is the slowest car that has gone 
around this uh, this track. But I'm still pretty damn impressed with this. That is just over a second, 1.2 seconds down on the Plymouth Fury. And this is front wheel drive. This is so much power for the front wheels to deal with in the worst conditions you can put it in. They're not the biggest front tyres either. And it's only 1.2 seconds down on the Plymouth Fury. That's... <laughs> This Volvo really, really very, very good. I think that's a mighty impressive time for a front-wheel drive car. Yes, it is difficult. Yes, you will have a mile a mile of understeer if you're not careful with the throttle. And yes, it will more than happily spin the front wheels uh, if you're an idiot. Still going. Fourth, fifth. Yeah, still. <laughs> it will be more than happy to do it. But if you want to drive it sensibly, you can. And that's what I'm most impressed about. You can actually drive this car sensibly. Well... I think it's an impressive, impressive to have got around the track so easily at least. Now it is time to see how well the Volvo does down the Le Mans straight. Well, as far as speed goes, I will be honest, we're not really expecting the Volvo to, uh, to beat the Ferrari that went out last time. It isn't exactly the, the greatest shape in the world for cutting through the air. However, we're probably going to see past 200 miles an hour. That's what I'm hoping to get out of this uh, car. And let's face it, that's not bad for an 850R estate car that's, you know, still front-wheel drive. Let's have a look. What can we do with the gears? What does it expect? 230. That's quicker than I was expecting. Right, we will go oops, somewhere over here. There we go. Let's get rid of this. That is actually quicker. Uh, seeing as this has got the same engine, same amount of power as the Plymouth Fury had, and that hit... Uh, wait, hold on. Did we just lose some speed? This might be one of those... Okay, no, never mind. We're all good. Uh, it could be, as I say, it could be one of those rare cars whereby I actually need the downforce to keep it on the road when we're getting up to 230 miles an hour. Um, but uh, it looks like now the uh, the benchmark has uh, sorted itself out. Well, that's, that's quicker than I was expecting it to do. If it can hit 232 miles an hour, it will go quicker than the Hellcat. The Hellcat did 231. Let's see if we can get the uh, the Volvo to the uh, to the speed. We're going to have to be uh, quite, I think, quite careful in uh, getting it up to the uh, 200 mile an hour mark in a yeah a thousand horsepower front wheel drive Volvo. But you know the benchmark is uh, pretty accurate these days, so. I, I am I'm very much hoping that we can we can do that uh, that speed in these corners are um, not the most fun I've had in a car <laughs> in a car ever. Got to be so so careful trying to uh, to put the uh, the power down here. Rear tires are still not uh, not quite heated up fully. I don't know how this is going to react to the bumps either, or indeed turning at 220 plus miles an hour. Oh, found some understeer. Uh, boot it and it'll straighten itself up. That is the one advantage of the front wheel drive. Uh, if things start going a little bit wrong across the bumps and uh, stuff and it start oversteering, you're losing control, just boot it and it'll straighten itself up completely. Uh, but yeah, how on earth it's going to manage going at 200 and something miles an hour front wheel drive? Uh, we are still spinning the wheels. I thought we were. Right, we're going to have to uh, slightly be careful with that. Yeah, okay, so we can still in sixth gear at 210 miles an hour. We still spin the wheels. Come on, Volvo. 232 is what I want you to do. I don't think we're actually going to have the grip, the traction to do this. Come on, car. 226, 27. We've only got four more miles an hour to go. Come on, Volvo. Ah, there's crests and bumps. We're bursting into wheel spin. Come on. <laughs> I want 230 out of a Volvo. It's not going to do it, I don't think. Now we've got a corner to deal with. We're in the air. We've made the turn, though. It dealt with that jump really quite well. We have lost some speed. Yeah, if I go flat out, even here, we spin the wheels. <laughs> oh, and it is crazy. I had actually kind of hoped that at that speed we weren't going to have so much wheel spin. But uh, I was wrong. 228 miles an hour in a front-wheel drive Volvo estate car. It is only three miles an hour down on the Hellcat. That's how fast this 850R estate is. Despite all of that power going through the front wheels, despite the fact that it is more than happy to sit there and spin its wheels the entire length of the Le Mans straight, if you let it, it's still got up to 228 miles an hour. It is 10 miles an hour quicker than the Plymouth Fury. It's a fair way down, yes, on the other Ferrari 250LM. But uh, 
That's that's a lot more speed than I was expecting out of the Volvo. I will be honest. I did not quite expect it to uh, to get up to that kind of a speed, especially not with the uh, with the traction issues. But there we go. It may have wheel spun its entire way down the uh, Le Mans straight, but it did it did hit 228 miles an hour. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.